Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, it is 18 hours and 6, 4 minutes into the 15th day of October, uh, 2021. And we have a package opening, and we'll continue on with our notes to a certain degree. Uh, dreams are certainly, uh, we have two packages. We have this one here, and another one, a bigger one. Uh, dreams are quite interesting. They give you experiences that you would not ordinarily have. And because you wake up from the dreams, hopefully, uh, you wake up none the worse for the wear. In other words, even if something bad happens to the dream, it doesn't necessarily mean that it, 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 it's bad forever in terms of your physical condition. It just simply means that you had a bad experience, but you survived through it. So this is it. Uh, see, Top Shark. Uh... It's again sealed very well. I think this is the grinder I ordered. Uh, let's look at that and see. Yeah, it's the grinder I ordered. And that's kind of what happened. <coughs> The last couple of dreams, last, uh, well, I say last night, but my last night. And it gave me some good insight into how certain things exist. I'm not going into the details of the dream because sometimes it's not, it's not a necessity to go into to the, uh, the, the needed details. But it allowed me to experience things in such a manner that I began to understand uh, some more of a particular situation that I never really had before. We all have to talk about knowing things, but a lot of times our knowledge is, is uh, sort of insufficient in terms of uh, what we think one thing is as compared to another. And then we go on making pronouncements based on this sort of experience, this sort of knowledge. Even though fundamentally we shouldn't be doing that because, well, our sort of understanding is sufficiently m minute. Where in a dream you can gain more knowledge than than you typically would because you gain more experience. But even there, uh, sometimes you have to be careful with the details because there could be things that uh, one, other people don't want to hear, but two, uh, people could have a problem with. And this is a sort of what I'm finding over and over again is that the younger people today and, not, and I shouldn't, shouldn't say the younger people today, because it's, this includes people who are older as well. Who have no connection to history. And when you don't have a connection to history, your understanding of what goes on in the world is very limited. But yet they can't seem to understand this, that they have a limitation to their understanding this package is very hard to open. And there's no, in many cases, as I said before, when I was talking to someone, uh, I was talking to someone who is involved in a number of these conspiracies, and a lot of people are. And it seems to be more, the more technical a person is in terms of their, in terms of their existence, that they end up, it's another, I got another one, uh, on a sale, I got another, uh, mini grinder. And again, this is cordless. So I have two of them now. So I can do various different jobs with them. I could put different heads on. I don't necessarily have them to change or anything. Oh, even though it's got a very good, uh, uh, keyless chuck on it. So yay for that. 
uh, put it back in its box and open the second one up. And this is what I found because they were there are people on Instagram. This is primarily from Instagram, uh, who are from all over the world. And they do not have this understanding that we, that uh, we'll say we as, you know, a lot of people who are, the younger people that are from basically uh, uh, North America and Europe, they don't have the same senses, the same ideas, because they don't have the same experiences that we do. They have similar experiences, but they don't have the same experiences. So here's this, uh, this package, big one. I know what this is. It's uh, the other mixtures that I ordered. So this will help hopefully resolve a particular problem. That was much easier. And one case, this was uh, these Russian dancers, uh, a ballet, were using what people thought to be uh, blackface. But they weren't careful in looking at the costumes. And what I had to point out to one person who was offended by uh, and this was one white person who came into this. I ordered it. Oh, they sent me the wrong console. Anyways. <laughs> and point out that these weren't blackface. That these were representative of a group that I'm part of. My last name is Kata. And Kata means, it's from Caramel, that means dark. And, uh... We are Asian, we're a dark, we're dark Asiatic people. We're Asiatic Greeks, Asiatic Syrians. The Persians are like this as well, they're dark Asians. Uh, and so... The costumes were Persian costumes, so they were doing a dark Persian. And the Russians, the Russians and the Turks, who were Persians, have a long history together. And so this was a ballet performed within the sphere of the sort of uh, 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 of Russian history, where there were the you know the interactions between with the dark Persians, uh, the Asiatic Persians. And so this is what this was, and just the way in many cases, girls, if it's all ballet and they're all girls in the ballet, there are certain girls who will dress up as guys. There is, of course, part of the costuming that will be also be darken the skin with some form of makeup. This is this is uh, performance art. The person who was commenting, I guess the younger person, didn't understand this and was horribly offended. But they were offended because they didn't understand the history. But, but you're not going to be able to explain it to them because they don't have any sense of history. They don't have the sense of history. That, that's not there. It's not within their scope of experiences. And so they're going to be lost with that. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to be it for now. Uh, it's about 10 minutes in, so I do have to uh, fix this up to photograph it. And uh, uh, I don't have any way to get up and return it, so I'm just going to have to inform them that uh, I won't be accepting the package and get my money back. Or have them send me another package that is that is the proper one. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. I will see you uh, uh, for the next, for the transition. I won't be outside. I might be outside because it is raining outside. There is a place I can go that I can sit inside and watch the rain and watch the weather at that point in time. So uh, I might do that. It depends. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's going to be back here for the. Um, uh, YouTube stroll. I'm at the Yowie Vlogs right now, and we'll continue on from there. Well, it is about uh, five hours, well, it's 25 hours and 27 minutes into the uh, 16th day of October 2021, and I'm back here. It's time for another transition. Uh, another transition. And I do have the ability to vlog, sort of. <laughs> Uh, I'm back in my oscillating mode again, which means I'm not getting a straight sleep. I'm getting maybe uh, three, maybe four hours worth of sleep. Then I'm awake again uh, for a period of like three, four hours. Then go back to bed again, sleep again for about three, four hours. 
Uh, it just, this happens every once in a while. It's, a, it's I guess it was, it's, a, it's a type of crash. A type of sleep deprivation crash. Uh, because I'm a lucid dreamer, and the work continues while I'm asleep, a lot of times when I wake up, there's nothing left to do. Ugh. In the dream, but more often than not, it's not that there's nothing left to do in the dream. Specifically, in other words, the dream, dream just sort of finished itself. Uh, it leaves you with questions in terms of how you manage things, how you dealt with with the experience that went on, and what experience went on. That the mind becomes active again, and you don't go back to sleep. You simply have to sit up and sort of work through the thoughts that you have, the thought process. And this sort of is how a large chunk of research is done. It, 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 when you're working on a project, it takes months and years to, to sort of get through things. Uh, because the pieces come in in fragments. You don't necessarily know how one piece fits with the other. And so it, it does become a puzzle because you do have to go through a number of different uh, processes uh, to sort of figure out what is what. And sometimes you don't. It's, it could take you a year or more and it's not that you get another piece, it's not that you, you sort of figure it out. You get another piece of the puzzle, and this sort of extra piece that comes in gives you a connection between one event and another event, or one issue between another issue, you know. And again, events don't necessarily have to be something uh, spectacular or like in history. The event is uh, arbitrarily defined as something that goes on at a particular point in time. That's an event. It could be uh, how a system is switched on, how a system how a system is switched off, how a part of a system is switched on, how a part of a system is switched off. Uh, these are different sort of events. Or let's say you're working on a theoretical idea and as you peruse through, let's say, Twitter and they have a number of these uh, research lists where researchers will post some of their findings, they'll talk, they'll discuss their different points, uh, and you'll see someone who's working on something similar to what you're doing, and they'll, will we'll be able to prove something, because, uh, like, in my case, I don't have a laboratory, so, is someone working on something similar than I am, in a laboratory setting, that demonstrates or illustrates a process that I'm seeing in the dynamic world. In other words, can, I, can you match up a laboratory event with a real world event? Uh, if you can, then that's great. If you can't, then you just simply move on and sort of... And sometimes, in terms of events, you get events uh, or, or, or that occur, they really don't... you really can't place them. So, okay, that's interesting. And it's not... you're not sort of tossing it away. You sort of just simply put it on the shelf and say, okay, I'll get back to that later. Because there's no particular reason for you to go back to it because you don't see a particular reason to go back to it. Uh, this was the case, uh, we're talking about uh, Jesuits, and you say, oh, that's conspiracy theory, all these things. I know Jesuits. I know Jesuits. This is talking about Lionel. He knows Jesuits because, well, apparently he went to a Jesuit school and he knows friends who were Jesuits. Well, again, just because someone is something doesn't necessarily mean they have the entire scope of everything. Uh, they have a fragment of this. And again, it depends on the fragments that you pick up. The, 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 the fragments within your experience. Now, one of the conspiracy theories that have been going around was that the uh, Jesuits had sunk the, uh, the Titanic. And they were pointing out that the captain himself was a Jesuit. There was some odd behavior to the captain. And I went through it. I went through the, the, the number of these different lectures, and, and these lectures are typically three hours in length. And so it's a lot to go through. And I said, okay, interesting. Put it on the shelf, and every once in a while I'd bump into another theory, and, you know, it was pretty much along the lines of what I had already heard. And you get, you know, oh, nice piece, and you put it on the shelf, it's the, so the collection starts to grow. Uh, it wasn't until I was watching a, 
travel documentary where they had gone to Belfast and talked about the Titanic. And they were doing the Ken Burns things where they're reading from different letters from, that were, were, were around at the time, you know, pursuant to the, uh, uh, the Titanic. Let me just sort of get this uh, tossed out here a minute. Here, I got, uh, I just finished another road vlog. This is, uh, done, this is basically, uh, on 9-11. Lionel had been predicting a huge, uh, uh um, attack. He said, oh boy, you should gonna see what's gonna, what they've got planned for 9-11. And well, nothing really happened on 9-11. That's what I saying. I think a lot of his friends who are Democrats are either hearing something wrong or they're playing with them. But anyway, he's well placed, so. <laughs> so I'm, I just finished editing that video now. Yeah. Oh. I just have to get it up to, up to YouTube, so that's what I'm doing, nothing. Getting the upload started. I'm almost near the end of road logs, so that means the other the uh, the what do you call it the um, observation vlogs will begin. As soon as the road vlogs end, that's when the The others will begin. So basically, these are the verbal essays. I know I've been making some some horrible mistakes, but they, you, you don't realize that at the time when you're doing something, when you're filming something, particularly if it's in the moment, you don't realize the quality that's going to come out of it. I realized that as I was sort of fixing up the camera uh, to sort of so it wouldn't uh, be as bad as it was in terms of the position, that there was an issue. Uh, with, uh, with the audio, I pushed the camera forward so that the mirror, the new mirrors wouldn't be, uh, interfering with the, uh, with the, uh, with the, um, with the filming, with the, with the, with the camera. But as I pushed it forward, what ended up happening is you ended up having, um, it'll, the camera was more in the wind, and as the wind came in, it sort of drowned out, it, it, it sort of uh, crushed the sound of the voice. And that wasn't a very good thing, it doesn't leave for a good, good uh, experience with the sound, so uh, there's a lot that has to be sort of redone as an essay, and so I probably will end up doing that, is going back and redoing these essays. But of course, these essays, because they're not written down, they're not uh, uh, specific to anything, you have a hard time kind of... Uh, you have a hard, you have a hard time... Uh, Oh, it's hard doing this stuff at the same time. There you go. It's better. I'm waiting for it to readjust. There we go. It's readjusted. Uh... Anyways, back to uh, the Jesuit. And one of the letters was from a Jesuit priest who had boarded at Belfast going to London to pick up the, the passengers to go across the Atlantic. Uh, he was writing his superiors. And this is a letter between his superiors and um, this particular Jesuit. 
and they ordered him off the ship. They didn't specifically even uh, give a particular reason why. They just simply said that it was urgent he get off the ship. And so, even though he had his passage, his fare already paid by an American, uh, and so he was basically going across for free, um, he got off at London. Of course, the, London, the, the ship left London and uh, sailed into history as it uh, hit an iceberg off the coast of, uh, well, basically Nova Scotia. Uh, this is where it, they, they come across. They come across uh, to Iceland. There's they, there's a sort of a northern passage there, uh, and they come down the coast, the the east coast for, um, of Canada to New York. That was the actual path, and of course, off the east coast uh, in the northern Canadian waters, this is where you have icebergs coming down. And so there's a number of different things you have to watch out for in terms of the iceberg because. Icebergs, even though you see them, a majority of the iceberg is underwater. You can't see it. So you would typically, as a steamer would give, or as a ship, you would give the iceberg a wide berth. You would go around pretty wide. But apparently this wasn't the case, and they got too close, and this is what ended up sinking the Titanic. Uh... The fact that you had this letter from the Jesuits, this sort of conversation in this documentary, led me to believe that there is often something more to this Jesuit story. It was a second, a second um, sort of indication. But then, as time went on, I, thought, I did sort of consider it and put it into a further category, which moved the category from okay, nice. Uh, I found something else, but it, did it took another couple of years. I was, as I was doing the work on the history of calculus and the history of quantum mechanics, I was like, in many cases, almost on a continuous basis, it doesn't matter what path I went down through, through physics, through, uh, through, um, um, calculus, I kept running into the Jesuits. <laughs> uh, and I kept running into them in, with, under this whole concept of something called Gnosis as Gnostics. And these were alchemists, these were a number of different, uh, offshoots uh, of paganism. And they began to realize that the plausibility that the, that the Jesuits could have, stunk, could have sunk the ship, that they would have had motive and means to do so, that it now went from an implausibility to a plausibility. Plausibility doesn't mean that, that they, definitely, they definitely did this. It means it's, it's likely they could have done it. In other words, they had the opportunity to do so. Uh, but you'll never know, because there's often bits and pieces that are missing in history, just like everything else. And so you know, you never actually get the answer, but you approach it in the limit, and this is what calculus is. And most of your cell phones, everything else works off of that basis of... approximation. But this is sort of the nature thing. This is something that, you know, Lionel in his analysis, has failed to capture that there are bits and pieces that are so far unknown that you can only come up with an approximation of what's going on. You can never really say for certain that this is what this is. And this is why you can't say, well, well yeah, okay, something is maybe a work, but it's not planned out to the specific details that it is scripted. And this is why I try to explain to other people that, that there are so many things that can go wrong in between. So many unknown variables that it's difficult to say that anything is indeed scripted. Even when it is fundamentally scripted, because you can't know all the particular details of a particular script or a particular event that's going to be be pre-described, if, if you will, uh, there are always things that will go wrong. We all, everybody, anyone who's worked on a product knows that there are unforeseen issues that pop up in every single project. It doesn't matter what project you work on, there's always unforeseen events and issues that pop up all over the place. And part of success is persevering through these various different hiccups, these various different uh, um, issues, these unseen events uh, that could throw us off course and force us to change the way we're thinking about something. Anyways, uh, that's my, these are my notes for today. This is sort of my, uh,
junk log or journal at this particular transition point. Uh, I have everything going up to the internet right now, and uh, I'll do that again in the, after in the afternoon. I'll uh, upload another uh, as we get close to the end of uh, the road vlogs. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen and Middle School for Life.